You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. With your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Kathleen Panning, who has been an ordained minister for over 35 years, brings her experience to your ministry. Be it energizing your staff or working through conflicts with your faith community. So now, please welcome the host of A Flame Ministry, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Welcome. This is A Flame Ministry, and we are here today, as always, on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and this is a show about ministry for those who are professionals in ministry, pastor, priest, rabbi, deacon, imam, uh, cantor, whatever your title may be, as well as for those who are the members of a faith community in leadership position. And we kind of work on two different tracks, depending upon who my guest is. Sometimes we try to uh, smooth out some of the differences and misconceptions between faiths. But many times um, my guest is someone who talks about something that's kind of relevant to all faiths because it's about people. And that is true today. My guest is Dr. Marissa Pay, and she is the celebrity host of the 2016 Podcast of the Year Top 10 in Health Award. And it's a, an award-winning show called Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa. She's an organizational psychologist, speaking and consulting all over the world, motivating individuals and organizations to be happy happy 88% of the time. Her show guests have included best-selling authors like Dr. John Gray and Dom Miguel Ruiz, uh, Marianne Williamson, and even Marianne from Gilgan's Island, uh, and Muhammad Ali's daughter, Lila Ali. Um, she moonlights as a red carpet MC and celebrity host interviewing stars like Halle Berry, John Travolta, and Quincy Jones to use their limelight to highlight causes that help Heal Our Planet, winner of the 2016 Asian Entrepreneur of the Year Award, the 2014 Asian Heritage Award, and the 2017 Iconic Women Creating a Better World for All, and is a sought-after global thought leader. Her balance tools include an app called 21 Day Fast from Complaining. That sounds like appropriate for these days. Uh, and that, that helps improve all kinds of relationships. Um, it's been out since 2011. And she also has a DVD called Balance Tai Ki Gong. Um, and I hope I'm saying that exactly right. Uh, a moving motiv meditation that promotes inner peace one breath at a time. Dr. Marissa's newest book is Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are. And that has hit eight bestseller lists, including number four on the Denver Post and number one on Amazon. It's also uh, award, been awarded four book award medals. And in her spare seconds, uh, she raises recovering teenagers, races sailboats, and lives out her life motto, which is no regrets for the past and don't die wondering for the future. Dr. Marissa, it is a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show today. Thank you. I'm really grateful to be here and uh, tuned in to you and ready to splatter a little hope and happiness on your audience. Well, thank you. I think we all need that today. From the time we first met and talked, uh, 
there's been a lot of change in the world and in most of our lives <laughs> um, because of um, a little uninvited guest called the coronavirus. And um, so, you know, that's making things different for just about everybody, not only in the United States, but all over the world. Uh, you're an organizational, organizational psychologist. I want to start out with letting you uh, explain a little bit about what that means, what it is that you do with that. Great. Well, um, let's see. The easiest way to say this is, uh, and I have a grad student uh, uh, <laughs> watching right now, so he, he, I, maybe I should have him uh, answer that question, but I do have a doctorate in organizational psychology, and the easiest way to explain it is you know, traditional psychology deals with the mind, it deals with human dynamics, and organizational psychology deals with human dynamics at work. So how do humans uh, interact? How do humans um, uh, operate in organizations? So because it is not a well-oiled machine, because we do have humans, we have things like power, politics, miscommunication, conflict, Things I'm sure mm. never happened in your ministry, but <laughs> oh, um, never. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I get to go in organizations and help them with their effectiveness, both from an individual standpoint. So I get to work with uh, leaders who are technically brilliant but emotionally challenged, and talk to mm. them about you know it, it's, uh, logic is illogic. Uh, they often say, you know, it's not rocket science. Why don't people just do what I tell them to do? And so we explain <laughs> that there's only one organization where there is no power, politics, miscommunication, or conflict. And do you want to work there? And they say yes. And I say it's the cemetery. And then they <laughs> say no, because uh, where there are no people, there are no politics. So well, knowing that things are like politics, favoritism, those are just normal things. I, I might argue with you about no politics with the cemetery because I worked in a congregation that was sued over where somebody was buried in the cemetery. So the, oh you know, the cemetery, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, even that, carries on yeah. life after death, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, well. You know, the dead person wasn't complaining at all, but it was those who were living. Some of them had a problem with that. But um, but anyway, it, and that, you know, kind of brings us to where we are, because, yes, uh, faith communities, uh, congregations do have conflict. They are an organization and they do have conflicts within them. Um and you talk about helping people be happy and organizations within an organization and themselves 88% of the time. And I want to ask you, why 88%? Well, if you are 100% happy, you're dead. Uh, because <laughs> it's not possible for human beings to be happy 100% of the time. If you're not happy, if you're, if you're always happy, there's no contrast. So you wouldn't know you're happy. And I don't want my audience to be deaf. So that's why I say 88% happy instead of 100% happy. And all those right now that are tuning in on my Facebook Live know that the reason why I say 88 instead of 100 or nine, instead of 99 is 8 is a lucky number in Chinese. And I know oh. you thought I was Swedish. But no. that's a joke. If, <laughs> only if you see me, I, you see my pictures. But um, eight is a lucky number in Chinese. It's a homonym for good fortune. So 88% happy is your double good fortune for you to be happy. That's our birthright. And many of us have forgotten or abdicated our birthright to be happy 88% of the time, especially now with the uh, number 19. So we're going to come back and, and, and expand on that. But uh, I want my, I'm on a happy 88 mission, 8 million more happy people in the next eight years. 
fantastic. And yes, we are going to come back and talk more about how we get there and how to um, help people be happier and organizations be happier when we come back. This is a Flame Ministry on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. Stay tuned because we got more to say. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale. An international initiative called Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back. You are here on A Flame Ministry on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning, and my guest today is the one and only Asian Oprah, Dr. Marissa Pei. Um, and that's a, a title she was given, oh, I don't know, how long ago was that? Um, a, a long a time number, ago. A number of years ago. Um, Dr. Marissa is an organizational psychologist and the author of um, the award-winning book, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are, um, along with a lot of other things that she does. Um and before the break, Dr. Marissa, you were starting to talk about, um, you know, why 88% of the time for happiness, and it's a, um, the Chinese number eight for is a lucky number. Um, but how, you know, we're all dealing with this virus and the effects it's having uh, on jobs and on health and wellness. And there's a lot of stuff that people are trying to process right now that we really haven't had to deal with before, uh, including social distancing and quarantines and all of that. So in the midst of this, what are some of the biggest challenges to happiness that you would see people are facing? Well, it definitely seems like this um, virus, I call it the number 19, um, that 19 is bringing out the best in us and the worst in us. So the worst in us is the fear and the flight and the isolation and burrowing and staying in bed and getting depressed and hoarding toilet paper and hoarding food and and uh, just uh, uh, looting and uh, buying guns and just uh, that's the worst. And that comes out of a automatic, no choice, reactionary, um, abdicate, uh, uh, your, your whole attention is abdicated by the news or whatever, you know, is the loudest or the tweeting or whatever. And, and you, we forget that we have a choice. We forget that we are human beings. It's not social distancing, it's spatial distancing. It's six feet 
so the virus doesn't catch or spread. But we are humankind. We are social animals. We can pivot. We are creative. We can figure out how to uh, uh, fight the virus. We can figure out how to connect uh, in these times in a different way, which we have. I bought stock in Zoom because I knew that that's probably, you know, uh, 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 whether even when the virus goes, we're setting habits right now. We're setting, Mm -hmm. we're creating new ways. And if I can choose every morning to listen to what is going on, I listen to the LinkedIn news. I stay, I usually, before all, before number 19, I actually didn't listen to the news because news was a weapon of mass distraction. There's, you know, hundreds Mm -hmm. of thousands of news uh, stories, but depending on the producer and the, and the, the slant or the, uh, uh, um, the uh, reporter bias, you would be, have something put in front of you. So right now, the, the, the ones that are sensationalizing and, 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 and the automatic reaction is, Oh my God, worst case scenario, we're all going to die. You know, Armageddon, uh-huh. da, 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 all of that is not useful. It's not useful for me. I know that when my stress goes up, my immune system goes down. And I have a choice every day what I focus on. So if yeah. nothing else, this virus is having us store up and uh, 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 improve and, and muscle up our biggest uh, talent and gift in life, which is choice. So I have a choice for 30 days now to go under my covers and wait this thing over, you know, and, and think about where getting and call people up every day. Oh my God, how am I going to do this? Oh my God, I can't believe this is my toilet. Oh my God. Blah, blah, blah. Or I can take a breath. Ah. And in that space, after I meditate, after I pray, I go, what should I be doing? What the inspiration. I woke up with this entire program and uh, uh, my graduate student, I, I thought I was going to be one of those, you know, burrow under the covers. And I got mm-hmm. approached by one of my former grad students, Matthew, who said, no, no, no. Because I said, this is like a huge jump for happiness. you going from fear to happiness. And right. his point was, no, this is your time to use what you do normally to uh, um have a, a, a balance central or a peace at home central, a place where people can come and say, wait a minute, this is 30 days of my life that I cannot get back. So I choose to sit around, play games, watch stuff and do that a little bit. Um, or I can work on myself. If I'm, a, if, if, if I'm a person that people have a hard time with, let me, you know, work with uh, um, a coach or, or, you know, read Eight Ways to Happiness from wherever you are and do the exercise so that you figure out who you are and, and get to a place where you like yourself. That would be a great goal for the next 30 days. Or learn yeah. some new recipes or get together with a community to do the things that you've never had time for. So we have an opportunity here to shut the worry up. <laughs> I yeah, up that. that's a, yeah, that's a nice, nice way to to put that. But one of the things you say is that, and you're you're talking about that, but not in so many words, is that happiness is an inside job, and yes. it is a choice that we can make. But yeah. you know, we hear. I don't know about you, but I grew up hearing things like, "Well, he makes me happy," or "She." makes me angry and unhappy and you know we're we're putting that happiness out on someone else to give it to us um as to what they do or don't do and things like that so how, what's how does it become an inside job for me what can i do with that to make it an inside job that is a great question. Thank you for that. And I'm doing show and tell on my Facebook Live. I was asked to write an article um, in the Unity magazine, and I called it Choose Happiness. So, yeah. so yeah, we, we were raised or, and I think it's, you know, when you're a kid, your parents do the best that they can, but they say things like, and I've said it too, um, I would be happy if you, <laughs> blank, blank, blank. Right. Do this and I'll be happy. Do that and I'll be happy. 
if you would only, I would be happy. And so we're trained to think that if we make someone happy, that's a good thing, right? And yeah. so happiness begins outside of yourself. Yeah, we're going to have to take a break. So we're going to pick this up when we come back on the other side of a break. So everybody, you got to stay tuned to learn how we take ownership of our own happiness. This is a flame ministry on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And yes, we're coming right back. So stay tuned. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email Alice at aliceasmar at AOL. We are back and we are uh, on Tune In Radio and the BBM Global Network, and this is a flame ministry. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. My guest is Dr. Marissa Pay, um, celebrity host of her own podcast, Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balance with Dr. Marissa, as well as being a, uh, having a doctorate in organizational psychology and author of the best-selling book, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are. And Dr. Marissa, before the break, you were talking about how we hear as uh, children, uh, you know, the the idea that if you only do so and so uh, such a thing, I will be happy. And we're talking about how happiness becomes an inside job. So please continue taking us on that journey to so we can own that happiness again. Yes. Yeah. Um so in addition to growing up, being happy or being told that, you know, uh, you make other people happy and you have the power to do that, we also then go on, thanks to Snow White and Cinderella, who say that, you know, once you meet Prince Charming, you live happily ever after, which continues this BS, the belief system that says, you know, someone else will complete you and someone else will, thanks Jerry McGuire, um, uh, uh, someone else is going to help make you happy. So that BS yeah. continues on. And so it's no wonder that we've got so many unhappy people, uh, one out of four on anti-anxiety, anti-something, depression. Now it's probably up even more with what's going on. And, mm -hmm. and we've advocated or we've given away our powerful tool called choice to make ourselves happy. I cannot depend on you making me happy, number one, because as Don Miguel Ruiz says, a past guest on my show, wonderful best-selling author of The Four Agreements, on my reading list, if you haven't read it, this is a good time to read that during the, the, the uh, voluntary um, stay-at-home arrest, house arrest. But, um, you know, he says that 
everyone is the, the main actor in their own play. We may think that everybody else is there to support our play, but they're not. They have their own play. So if I'm depending on you to make me happy, I'm going to be disappointed all the time. No one gets me the way I get me. No one has the ability to make me happy. I don't have the ability to make you happy in a constant way. I may say something or do something that you smile, but it's not permanent. If I can't take my muscle and love myself and approve of myself, I will never get what I think I need as love and approval from someone else. Not possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is a big one. Um, And one of my mentors um, has been uh, Barry Neal Kaufman, who is the author of a book, Happiness is a Choice, which is very much like what you're saying. And he talks about uh, a number of shortcuts to happiness in there. And gratitude, he says, is the shortest of the shortcuts to happiness. How does gratitude play into happiness for you? I'm going to have to go look and see how many of the things he, of his ideas he got from me. Ha ha ha. No, just <laughs> kidding. Um, <laughs> but all of the people who are on my Facebook live right now, who, who know me, hi, Joy. Hi, Chris Norwood. Um, they know that I say, my number one happy tool is to take a bite of my gratitude sandwich every single day. So we start the gratitude sandwich, the first bite in the morning is eight specific things that you are grateful for. Now, uh, the late, great Dr. Wayne Dyer says five. I'm a recovering overachiever, so I say eight, and you all know about the lucky number eight. So eight Mm -hmm. specific things, first thing in the morning, you wake up, you don't look at your email, you don't turn on the news, you don't uh, look to the person next to you for for joy and happiness, you just sit, you take a breath, and you start the day with eight specific gratitude. You can't say friends or family, not specific enough. So I woke up this morning and I said, I'm grateful that um, I could hear the uh, waves last night. I'm grateful that I got inspired yesterday. I'm gr- I mean, last night. I'm grateful that I have Zoom technology to connect. I'm grateful that I have a tribe that will wait until 9 o'clock to do the program. I'm grateful that I was inspired to create the Chinese yoga program. That's six. I'm grateful that I have two beautiful daughters who are just fine where they are seven and i'm grateful eight that i've been you know really um being more healthy with my walking and stretching and eating than i have ever before in my life so that's eight specific things that i start the day with like that and i cannot help but be in a better mood than had i rolled over read the news uh uh uh, worried about you know the attack of um, you know, who did me wrong yesterday? What didn't get done yesterday? Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, have the critical voices uh, give me a fat and ugly attack in the morning. You know, all of those things, if we don't train ourselves using gratitude as a methodology, then we are going to lose our balance. But if I can train the muscle to start my day with taking the bite of the gratitude sandwich, then the whole day gets wrapped. And then at the end of the day, the bottom of the bun is appreciation. So before I go to bed, instead of thinking of all the things that I didn't do and all the people that hurt me and all the insults that were done and all blah, 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 I just say, (laughs) what are eight things that I appreciate about myself? So Ah. I appreciate that I'm funny. I appreciate that I'm a Yak, yakety yakker. I appreciate that I have, I'm creative. I appreciate that I can sing. I appreciate that I write music. I appreciate that I raise sail posts. I appreciate that I'm a good mom 88% of the time. I appreciate that I'm a good uh, professor. I appreciate that I'm a good human being most of the time. So that wraps my whole day in gratitude and appreciation. And then nothing can go wrong. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. And there's so much more to unpack with all of this, but we have to take another break. So this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for A Flame Ministry. And Dr. Marissa and I are coming right back, so stay tuned. 
Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back. This is is a flame ministry and I am Pastor Kathleen Padding your host. We are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio as we always are and my guest today is the one and only Dr. Marissa Pei, um, the Asian Oprah author, a podcast award-winning podcast uh, host and um, we are talking about of all things in this time and place something very powerful for helping us through these days, and that is happiness and how we're going to take this and wrap it into how this affects um, our congregations and uh, ministry uh, as we go forward with this. But before the break, Dr. Mercy, you were talking about what you talk about as um, kind of a, a gratitude sandwich, starting the day with eight specific gratitudes and ending the day with eight things that you appreciate about yourself. I like that. That's that's a really good way of wrapping the day in something good to start and end the day with that, uh, especially now with all of the... Um, potentially negative and potentially worrisome and fearful things uh, and stressful things that people are facing. So as you, as we think about faith communities, one of the major stresses that they're facing right now is that the way they've been used to doing things isn't happening. Um, faith communities are not holding services, the face-to-face -face services, because uh, that's, you know, gathering too many people and potentially spreading this uh, COVID-19 virus. Uh, they, when people aren't gathering, sometimes the funds don't come in, and uh, that causes all of these things bring stress into the people, the, the professional faith leaders and the organizational leaders. What are some things that they can do to to shift their mindset, uh, to work together better uh, as an organization in a time like this? So, um, great question, and let me let me answer the very first one, uh, which uh, hopefully I'll remember to lead to the second answer. So, the first one is I think this is an opportunity in this next 30 days to do something that I think has plagued human beings for uh, our entire lives. And that uh, is, is linked to what I talked about earlier is looking to others for love and approval. And the appreciation is about, you cannot be effective at whatever you're doing at all, unless you have a modicum of self-love. 
And in order to have self-love, you have to be okay with all parts of you. And that's why the exercise in the book um, on page 160 uh, is, is such an important one where we appreciate and know we are Im imperfectly perfect, 88% perfect. And when we do that, the, from the place of self-love and self-approval and from the place of being okay with who we are and knowing that we are lovable, loving, and loved, then allows us all, faith-based, non-faith-based, whatever the organization is, to pivot right now with creativity. You cannot be creative if you are worried, you cannot be creative if you're in fear. If you can, you cannot be creative if you're depressed. Creativity is a hundred percent correlated to that place of balance, that place of inspiration, that place of allowing, that place of you know anything possible. So instead of seeing all of these changes because of 19 as losses which is what the news wants to tell you of oh, this loss, that, mm -hmm. this loss, that, this loss, that. And, and it's real. I, you know, I'm not like smoking anything. I get it. You know, you got laid off. I get it. You know, you, you don't have the income that you used to have. I get it. And, and without trying to minimize that, we all have this opportunity to be creative around adapting creative and looking for the silver lining. I put on a life jacket with a silver lining every single morning. Why? Mm. It just makes me feel better. If I'm in a place where I feel good, then I come up with these ideas for the peace at home movement that I never would have before. You know, I can't expect people to do a coaching program with me for $8,000, which is what normally happens in this time and place. But I can do workshops for a nominal cost to support the platform so that people can uh, expand themselves and, and learn to love themselves in a way that they couldn't do before. So this is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's the same mm -hmm. as the Phoenix Rising. That's the title of my conclusion. Out of the ashes, you know, we're, we're, we can either look at the fire as destroying or we could look at the fire as alchemizing to bring forth the new. And, and that was, Thank you for the hearts. That was pretty brilliant. I've never said that before. <laughs> <laughs> and that's case in point. I mean, I am in a place of inspiration and flow because I have chosen to see this whole thing that's happening as an opportunity. Um, my teacher, uh, one of my teachers, uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith, who also wrote the forward to the book, uh, said a long time ago, and I've, I've had this in my uh, uh, in my calendar, every morning at nine o'clock, it says, the alarm says, how is a, a, a spiritual quality going to show up in my life today? How is kindness? How is generosity? How is prosperity? How is abundance? How is love? How is peace? So every week I have a different quality. And that allows me to hone in not on the loss, but on the generation of something that is seeking to come forth because of the uh, uh, the dross, the dross is falling away. The, 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 the things that aren't working are going away. We don't like it. We're human beings. We don't like change. I know very few people who say, ah, yeah, I love change. No, we're creatures of comfort. We like things regular. But can you think of, you know, when the dinosaur age, if they were comfortable with running around, you know, killing uh, dinosaurs and going, Ooh, uh, uh. I mean, th that would be our world today had there not been change, had there not been ev evolution. How are we growing and expanding right now with number 19? What is being developed in me as the direct result of what is happening now? What is it? Yeah. Am I more yeah. compassionate? Am I more creative? Am I more... Uh, 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 you know, finding my funny bone. What is it that is seeking to emerge in this situation with the virus instead of saying, I lost this, I lost that, I lost this? Come on, yeah. folks. Shut yeah. the worry one, up. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that you said that's really struck me here is that, you know, what we look for 
is what we're going to find. And we're going to have to take a break, but that I want people to think about that. What we look for is what we will find. So we've got more with Dr. Marissa coming up. This is A Flame Ministry. We are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and we are coming right back, so stay tuned. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back. We are here, always, always here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and this is A Flame Ministry. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. My guest today is Dr. Marissa Pay, and we are talking about happiness in the midst of coronavirus 19, COVID-19, and she is the author of Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are, and wherever we are these days is not where we were a month ago. And so things have changed and life has changed. And one of the things you said before the break, Dr. Marissa, uh, as you were talking about things was, uh, you know, what we look for is what we will find. What, how is happiness? How is kindness? How is love? How is compassion? How is God showing up more in my life and in the world today than before? And so for a faith community, for the leaders of that community, what is a couple of tools perhaps that they could uh, use and share with their community to help people through this time. Uh, a couple of sayings, some ideas, you know, what we're talking about, yes, but are there any specific tools that you would recommend that would be easy to implement? So the gratitude sandwich is my number one tool, my number one happy tool. Um, the number two tool is ICBW. And this is especially important right now, which is it could be worse. So if you're feeling sorry for yourself because you're stuck at home and you can't do all the things that you used to do, well, um, it could be worse. You could not have a home. You could not have running uh, 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 water or electricity. You could not have toilet paper. <laughs> you could not have. So what, that's the quickest way for me uh, with my clients is when they're feeling sorry for themselves is to use the ICBW tool. And you, at, at the same time, you know, we're human beings. We cannot be always serenity now and always happy. That's why it's 88%. Allow yourself the 12% to be unhappy. Um, uh, uh, watch a sad movie. Let yourself cry. Tears are the disinfectant that keep your heart soft. Allow yourself to be mm. frustrated. You know, I bite my pillow or I, or I I stomp my feet. I go up and down the stairs to release that negative energy because 
negative energy takes up more volume than positive energy. If I don't release that negative energy, it is not going to help. However, it is not going to allow room for the creativity. So I have a, a tool called the vent partner. So I have a friend who, when I get frustrated, I'll call her, and her only job is to time me for two minutes. And I get to say whatever I want to say. I get to use whatever swear words because it doesn't bother her. And I use names uh, 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 if it's people that I'm frustrated with. And then I release that. I try to do it in under 16 seconds because that's the law of attraction you were talking about. What you attend to grows bigger. What you focus on becomes law. So we don't want negativity to be law. So I, 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 I just release all of that. And then her job is not to fix me. Her job is not to say, well, have you tried this or tried that or tried that? It's not a problem solving session. It is a venting session. And then she has the ability to do the same thing back to me. So you can start with two minutes. If you, I've gotten really good at it because I believe in the 16 seconds from teacher Abraham Hicks that you are going to uh, bring forth something that you don't release in 16 seconds. And so, um, uh, but, you know, start with the two minutes. And then the, here's the rule. You cannot complain about the same thing again. So if something new happens, mm -hmm. you can talk about it. But this will stop us from calling 5, 8, 10, 15 people talking about the same 5, 8, 10, 15 stupid things that, um, that dwarf our ability to be creative and inspired to, to do what we need to do. So that is um, the, the, the vent partners, the tool. And then the, the one that just got triggered is I have a thing called the 21 day fast from complaining with mm -hmm. Dr. Marissa. And it's a movement online. We've been doing it since July 2011 because a, a speaker came to Agape International Spiritual Center named Edwin Gaines. And she said, if you don't complain for 21 consecutive days, you will reach spiritual transcendence. And I'm all about a challenge. So I tried it and then I put it online. I think one of my uh, uh, people on right now, Eva Glenn G Atkinson from Kentucky, is one of three people who have made it all 21 days without complaining and you get a prize if you do it and and the point is not to, to necessarily win the prize the point is if i'm cognizant about what i'm choosing to say what comes out of my mouth then i can i can uh, create a hula hoop of influence where i am not drawing bad things to me so complaining and worrying are like a prayer for bad things to happen and that's an American Indian saying that I take to heart. So I want to follow Dr. David Simon. Here's a last tool. Dr. David Simon, uh, co-founder of Topher Center, had a living memorial before he died of a brain uh, tumor. And uh, oddly enough, he was a, a, a neuro, uh, neurosurgeon. But anyway, mm -hmm. he said something that I carry with me all the time, which is there are three questions that you can ask. One, before you open your mouth, before anything comes out of your mouth, ask three questions. One, is it true? And there's yeah. a lot of crap going around on social media, you know, don't do this, do this. Or, and every time I fact check and it's a hoax. So one, is it true? Number two, mm. is it kind? Number three, yeah. is it necessary? And if you yeah. cannot say yes to all three questions, shut the worry up shut the front door because we do not we do not need to have any more negative fear mongering hijacking media weapon of mass distraction any longer you are in control of what you focus on what you choose to believe and what you choose to say you know i'm as you're talking about this i'm thinking what would happen if a whole congregation, or at least a significant part of it, if, the, if all of the people took on that kind of a challenge, it, just those three questions, um, you know, is it true, um, is it kind, and is it necessary, before saying anything, and did that consistently, the power that would have in a community would be awesome, would be absolutely awesome. But we have to take another break. So um, this is a flame ministry. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Padding, and we are here on the BBM um, 
Global Network and Tune In Radio, and we are coming right back with Dr. Marissa. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success, as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers, as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at Soar with Katie Com. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Welcome back. We are here on Flame Ministry. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Penning. This is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. My guest today has been the super wonderful Asian Oprah, Dr. Marissa Pei, and author, um, podcast host, TV host, uh, celebrity, uh, red carpet celebrity um, host as well. And we've been talking about how to get through some of the realities of COVID-19 um, and be happier and have that be a part of our faith community. Uh, Dr. Marissa, we're running out of time. Uh, do you have any last nugget of thought that we haven't talked about or something you want to reemphasize uh, to share with people, as well as please share how people can get in touch with you? Certainly. So um, it was a great your your what if uh, suggestion earlier that before we went to break on wouldn't it be great if there was a community that followed Dr. David Simon's you know three questions before they open their mouth and there is one and uh, it's one it, it, it's my happy 88 family which everyone is welcome to join if you go to drmarissa.life just put in your email. I don't spam you. It's a once a month thing. But now, because of the month, it's going to be a, a, a very wonderfully rich month. It's a movement called Peace at Home. And it, it's in response to number 19. Uh, I'm fighting back with peace. <laughs> and we're going to have all kinds of peace programs, workshops, get-togethers. We're going to have an open mic happy hour. We're going to have 
um, a, a children's hour where I read my Mommy What Are Feelings book. Uh, I, 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 we're going to have parenting workshops. We're going to have loving myself workshops. We're going to have all kinds of activities. So you cannot, you have a choice. You can stay in bed under the covers or you can join the Peace at Home movement where we're taking this month by the balls and we're going to juice every single day so that we're learning something new about ourselves, about others. Um, we're going to have some uh, relationship coaching workshops. We're going to have some I want to write a book workshops. Uh, because I, uh, I actually have an eight list bestseller number one on Amazon, number four on Denver Post. I have all of these things that I want to share, and I want a community to do that in. And so keep it here. Uh, peace at home. Go to Dr. Marissa on Facebook. It's going to be on Eventbrite as well. Thanks to my director of operations, um, uh, uh, Matthew, my former grad student who's on the line. You can ask him any questions. Um, this is a great time. This is a great month where we can come out of the ashes and start something new and all the change that we wanted, we can be the change that we wanted to see. Thank you, Dr. Marissa. This has been such an honor and a privilege having you on. You have helped I think so many people today even, uh, and as the recordings are heard, um, have a little more happiness, be able to get through this time without hiding under the covers and be creative and be loving and caring and grateful. So one of the things I always tell people is after every show is find at least three things. You talk about eight. I've challenged people at least three, <laughs> but I would say at least eight uh, things that you're grateful for every single day. And one way to share a little bit of God's love, uh, at least one. Um, even as we are in social distancing, human distancing, whatever, uh, at least one. So thank you all. God's peace, God's blessings to every one of you. And again, thank you, Dr. Marissa. Until next time. This has been a Flame Ministry with your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Tune in each week as Kathleen guides you through the many challenges that face our faith-based communities today as she ignites the ministry of your faith community so that more people can hear the message of God's love on Kathleen Panning's A Flame Ministry. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.